My name is James Major. I'm reporting for the American Society of Retina Specialists here in Chicago at the American Academy of Ophthalmology Retina Subspecialty Day. I'm honored to have with me today Dr. Jerry Sabag. He is the, uh, at the Vitrio, Vitreous Macular Retina Institute in Southern California in Huntington Beach. And we're here to talk today, Dr. Sabag, about um, parsley and vitrectomy for symptomatic floaters. So tell me how you got started. Uh, yeah, you literally wrote the books on the vitreous, with the most recent being, I believe, in 2014. Um, so everyone knows that you are the vitreous expert. So tell me how you got started on doing vitrectomies for floaters. Oh, well, I think uh, your point is well taken. Uh, someone who has studied vitreous as many years as I have and who has as much respect for vitreous as I do uh, would probably be the last person that you would expect to do a vitrectomy for floaters. But um, I had a number of patients who flew back and forth from the West Coast to the East Coast to have YAG laser treatments uh, about 10, 12 years ago. They were more unhappy afterwards than before. They sought me out. And little by little, I, I felt their pain. And uh, at the time, 20 gauge vitrectomy was what we were doing. And so I did a few cases here and there, and the results were resounding. When sutureless small gauge vitrectomy came along, the threshold was lowered, and I felt more comfortable doing this procedure than with the 20 gauge approach. However, what I found most difficult was case selection. I didn't know who is an appropriate candidate and who isn't until we started measuring contrast sensitivity. This is an objective measure of a visual function in addition to visual acuity, it's actually a very important part of the phenomenon of vision. And astoundingly, we found 89% reduction in contrast sensitivity in patients who presented with bothersome floaters uh, as compared to age-matched controls. And so that enabled me to objectively assess individuals and determine whether they were truly impacted by their floaters or not. Furthermore, we use ultrasound to characterize the structure in the vitreous. We've actually got an algorithm to quantify the echo density of the vitreous and give us another objective quantitative measure of the severity of the condition, enabling us to A, show the patient the ultrasound, B, share with them that the number of their vitreous echo density compares this or that to our general population. But I find that the most telling tale is the contrast sensitivity because it enables me to say, yes, I understand you're afflicted, I believe that you're afflicted, and I have proof that you're afflicted. Or the converse is, well, I'm sorry, I, I understand you're right, bothered, right. but your contrast sensitivity is normal and I'm not really comfortable operating on an eye that has normal visual acuity, normal contrast sensitivity, and that the ultrasonography does not show significant amounts of vitreous density. So patient selection, very important. Now, let's talk about the second important thing, which is the actual vitrectomy itself. What gauge do you use? How do you go about the vitrectomy itself? Well, today I'm reporting on a series of 151 eyes in 121 patients who have undergone 25 gauge sutureless vitrectomy. The key difference to the way I perform this procedure is that I do not induce a PVD surgically. And I furthermore leave three or four millimeters of vitreous behind the lens untouched because vitreous contains antioxidants. And it was my thought that if that were there in phacic individuals, it could mitigate against cataract formation postoperatively. The reason not to induce a PVD is also not to increase oxygen levels in the vitreous postoperatively, but the risk of iatrogenic retinal tears increases substantially when you induce a PVD surgically, and so I didn't want to incur that risk. You know, as retina surgeons, we fear operating on someone with something that might be annoying or, or symptomatic floaters and inducing a terrible or giving them a retinal attachment or a vitreous hemorrhage or endophthalmitis, what are your complication rates? Well, of the 151 <clears throat> cases that I've operated on in the last several years, there have been no cases of endophthalmitis. 
there were six cases of vitreous hemorrhage that cleared spontaneously in the weeks following surgery and patients were extremely happy with normal visual acuity, normal contrast sensitivity postoperatively. We've had no cases of hypotony or glaucoma, one case of cystoid macular edema, one case of diabetic macular edema. There was one retinal tear in a young myope, which we identified and treated, no sequelae. Two cases of retinal detachment, one which occurred two weeks following the vitrectomy for floaters, and the other that occurred 14 months so it's arguable whether that second case is truly related to the vitrectomy for floaters, but I share it with you for full uh, transparency. In every single case, there was an improvement in their contrast sensitivity at one week post-op that was sustained at one month, three months, six, nine, 12, 18, 24, and we've got people that we followed for more than 36 months who have normal contrast sensitivity and are extremely happy. Do you think the advent of 27 gauge vitrectomy might make uh, vitrectomy for symptomatic floaters more available or, or it might cause more retinal surgeons to readily adapt? It's, a good, it's a good question, but I actually don't think that there's any advantage whatsoever to 27 gauge over 25 gauge. I think it's what you do, and as you well know, what you don't do at surgery that makes a big difference. In terms of our incidence of cataract formation, we have 48 patients who we have followed for a minimum of 24 months, and we've compared that subgroup of individuals to a group of 23 individuals who had extensive vitrectomy with PVD induction at the University of Amsterdam. And I'm grateful to Stavy Tan and Sarit Lesnick Oberstein for sharing with us and collaborating with us their data. After 24 months following an extensive vitrectomy, the incidence of cataract, cumulative incidence of cataract surgery was 80%. In our series, it was 33%. Furthermore, the mean time to when cataract surgery was performed after extensive vitrectomy for floaters was 7.3 months. After a limited vitrectomy without PVD induction and with re uh, 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 retention of the vitreous behind, the lens. behind the lens, it was 12.1 months. And that was a statistically significant difference. So I think there are reasons to believe that our approach is certainly effective, but also uh, very, very safe. Thank you very much. Food for thought for our retina surgeons and perhaps another option for it may be our most common problem of symptomatic floaters that we see you know, in the clinic all the time, every day. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. This has been James Major reporting for the American Society of Retina Specialists here with Dr. Svag at the, in Chicago at the American Academy of Ophthalmology Retina Subspecialty Day. Thank you so much.